Okay, we're back playing some uh, good old-fashioned War for Throne. Um, if you guys have seen my other videos, maybe you're noticing a trend here uh, in the variants that I choose to play. Um, so, yeah. 2-5 time control. Looks like it got a tough opponent in blue. Green also might be a force to be re reckoned with. Yeah, green is a good uh, standard chess player. Looks like maybe just starting to branch out into variants. So, yeah, these sorts of ratings over here scare me a little bit. Team play doesn't look like he has much experience. So, um, you know, working together blue and green could be a threat, but maybe not uh, such a big such a big threat in this particular game. Uh, blue, of course, very strong opponent. Um, I think now might be a good time to do this. With a uh, king there, I might be worried about this with blue capturing, but I'm not going to fear that now. Um, blue has to address that threat, so it looks like I'll be able to move safely into the center. Yeah, I was looking at the ratings here. It looks like just the FFA variance is, is what this guy plays, so... Spends a lot of time playing uh, probably this this particular variant. This one is pretty pretty popular. Um, let's continue development over on my king side. Yeah, my ratings if could be better. If you look at my hyperbolt rating, <laughs> uh, yeah, as of last night that was three thousand. But then I went and lost a couple hundred points in a matter of three or four games. So we'll be playing Hyper Bullet soon. Uh, can't promise I'll make a video on that, but I know my original Hyper Bullet video did very well. I know that's what you guys want to see. So who knows? Maybe we'll put together a video on that. Um, what's going on here? I guess green had an attack against red. I should be paying attention to what else is happening in this game. Um, I like this move. It resolves the fact that I had a hanging pawn over there. That response is puzzling. Um, I'm guessing that was a mouse slip. Let's see what green plans to do. With this, I'm threatening check one, two, three checks at least. Okay, green might be just trying to get out of dodge here. See, he's a tough opponent and doesn't want any part of it. And then, then again, green could be trying to push tr towards the middle. You see that with inexperienced players all the time. Um, okay, so red was just double attacked, it looks like. I wasn't paying attention. Should have been. Usually it's a good idea, and if you're unfamiliar with uh, the strategy of four-player chess, usually it's a good idea to help your opponent, especially when there are four players on the board. Uh, so that's an idea. I'm going to go there just to prevent Green from getting ideas about capturing the hanging pawn, or sorry, the hanging king that Red has. Okay, so is this okay? I think that's fine. Unless Blue decides to defend. Yeah, blue might defend, who knows. He's thinking about it. I think if blue goes here... Uh, yeah, if blue goes here, I almost have to capture blue, okay. Doesn't matter. Um... 
I think I want to get more kings into the center. This would be a good move for blue. Yeah, blue sees that right away. I want to be more creative with my approach to the center. Maybe we'll see that, in which case a capture, recapture, and I'd be able to get into the center. Yeah, that's red seems intent on getting those five checks in. Now, maybe that would be a good idea, but we'd almost certainly see uh, one of those two moves by blue. I want to defend this king first, and then I can start about uh, start to think about assisting red with the with the mating attack. Um, okay, that's the idea. Red might uh, wander closer to Green's king. Green will probably back, yeah, back up out of checking distance, but Red finds a way. I'm under attack. Let's, uh, yeah, let's tell Blue I don't want any part of that attack. I'll probably see that. No, nope, we won't. So green should be scared here. We'll see that. I'll get to push and capture another one. Oh, come on, red. <sighs> OK, I'm vulnerable to a double attack. Uh, what do we do about it? Let's back off. Maybe we'll see that and capture there, but I can always recapture. Of course, blue could capitalize on that. Who knows? Um, in the overall scheme of things, how am I doing? I'm tied for first in points. Got two kings, opposing two kings in the center. Blue has a whole bunch of kings and a whole bunch of pieces over here that he could use to attack. So I think I'm going to let green and red fight each other over there. I think I'm going to prepare for an eventual battle with blue. Although I could kind of flee that way, seeing that uh, green might be weak at some point in the future. I'm, re I'm really hoping for a capture. Come on, Red, help me out. Ugh, okay. Oh, that's interesting. Apparently blue... Or, yeah, apparently blue doesn't have an interest in joining green with the double attack. Yeah, I was expecting that. So a methodical game here. I don't want to pretend that I'm in any position uh, where I can say that I'm definitely winning. But a serious contender. What's happening with green and red? Well, best I can see is that red's doing some damage, but uh, is not going to be successful in taking down green. That's a good move. Add some additional support to that king. Clears the way for promotion. Red resigns. That's no bueno for me. Yeah. This game does not look like it's going to be going the way I want it to. I think I have to take there, so I'm in a position where I can defend. Green might be getting excited about that pawn. He does. I can defend without fear of a, uh, an attack. Um, let's see. So two strategies I could go with. A fight my way through over here, or B, 
promote on this side and migrate. I'm not going to make that decision yet. I'm going to keep developing, keep playing strong. Maybe green will go into the center and help me to fight off blue. Blue might be getting excited about mating red's king. I think uh, promoting. I want to promote that guy somehow. I'm not sure the best way of doing it. That. Yeah, I'm trading down over here, but I can promote. Might see that. Here, promote, promote. I think, yeah, like I said, I, I have those two options that I'm still considering. Um, if we count, blue has a lot of kings. Green has the potential for a lot of kings, but would need to promote first. Then again, there's a time element. It's going to take me a lot of moves to get over there, not just my main king, but I don't want to be trading up blue if that's the strategy I'm going to pick. Uh, looks like they won't give each other the points from a mate. Here would be a bad idea. Well, blue could play that, I suppose. All right. In one move, I will be fully promoted, and it's going to be decision time. One, two, three, four. I don't like that double stacked king there. One, two, three, four, plus potentially three more. I think with green's king over here, he'll be less likely to launch an attack this way. I'm going to go with option B. Move my king this way first. Of course now blue's gonna bulk up in the center and yeah, I don't know. Now green sees what I'm doing, sees what I am planning on doing and makes some movements like he's not going to allow it. I like this. Now, if we see that, well, we're not going to see that because that would give green the mate. Same with that. I would like to trade off some pieces with green. <sighs> no, I don't want to trade pieces off with green. I want green to move his pieces this way, away from me, and help me to bring down blue. Because I'm not going to be able to do it myself. I think this is probably good for green. Blue's going to give him the mate or not give him the mate, but Blue sees that there's nothing he can do. And instead, Blue's going to focus on the center. Now that we're out of the way with this distraction, though, Green might uh, see some benefit in helping me oppose Blue in the middle. Then again, Green might be satisfied with second place and would uh, happily assist Blue into the middle, leaving me in third place. We'll see how it plays out. Definitely an interesting game so far. It's kind of a, a grind. What's Blue doing?
blue is moving away from me, he sees that there's no use in attacking on this front. Do I even bother with, with that? All that's going to lead to is me trading off pieces in the center. You know what? I'm going to do that. If green wants to flood into the middle, he can. But with a king here, green has no way to advance into the middle. I think I'm just going to make a few waiting moves here. Figure out what green wants to do. Maybe signal to him that if he's going to start attacking blue, I'll gladly assist. Okay, there we go. Now green is joining in the attack with blue, or the attack on blue. Blue's trying to make some decisions. Um, this allows some extra support in here. I could also do a move like that, which I guess has more of an intimidation factor than an actual what are you going to do about it factor. But, you know, it's showing Blue that uh, he might be in a tough spot here should he decide to make a break for it. I know I just got rid of this king in the center in the hopes that green would add some support, but I've given green a few moves to make it make that decision. He's not going to gonna go for it, so I will instead reassert my dominance in the center. Yeah, so this is intimidation moves, kind of walking blue back. Uh, not that I have the power to push blue back, but um, like I said, it's it's psychological. It's it's intimidation. It's signaling my intentions, even if those intentions are more of empty threats. <laughs> uh, but just like two-player chess. Four-player chess definitely has a psychological aspect to it. It's a mind game, as well as a positional strategy game. Now, this is something that I could do better in my own play, is realize when an opponent is making empty threats, right? If Blue's seeing that I'm not comfortable pushing in a, into a position where he could get captured, I mean in the previous move, going back a few moves, uh, where were we? Yeah, here. I didn't move here until Blue stepped back. If Blue notices that, um, that can be an advantage. Blue could hold this wall and say, yeah, what, it, what are you going to do about it? And I think that's a that's a strategy that I could uh, adapt for my own play. Is to say when an opponent is doing that, when an opponent is showing that they don't want to trade, um, definitely take advantage of that. Definitely call their bluff. So yeah, green's going for broke. Um, now it might be time to start trading off with blue. Let's go for it. I think we're going to see blue start to empty out of the center. I'm still giving green a chance to advance here. Maybe do that if he's comfortable uh, with me having easy access to the middle.
So this is looking better and better, for me at least. Again, with these games, you never know. So here, for instance, I don't really have a good move. If I go here, Green's going to say, hang on a second, he's getting excited about going towards the middle. And Green's going to reevaluate whether or not it's worth it to help me hold off blue. Here, I'll get captured. Blue has an opportunity to attack. Um, it's a silly move, but again, now I'm, now I'm nervous that, yeah, see? Green's reacting. Then again, maybe green is letting me into the middle. Got to see the silver lining, right? <laughs> but I'm interpreting this as green is reacting and saying, oh, no, you don't. You're getting too excited about going to the middle. It's still a three-player game, and we can just as easily turn on you the way you and I turned on blue. I don't want to leave these two unopposed. And I don't want to attack because there's this possibility. Um, let's try this. Maybe blue does want to leave in the middle. I'm going to let green hold off blue there. I mean, I'm not saying he's going to he's going to work alone. Now, 1 2 1 2 could be 3. What's the value of this king? Do I want to trade it off? Blue's just going to keep walking me back. I think I'm okay with that for now. I think it's time to say, I've got three, you've got two, and if I get into the middle, that's game over. One, two, there, there. I... I guess I have to go for it. If green is a smart player, he'll see that this is winning for me, and he won't help me with that. But... With blue off the table, maybe he sees he might have some decent winning chances. He's inexperienced. Who knows? Of course, he doesn't have winning chances if blue's out of the game. So this was probably not the best move to play, in hindsight, now that I think about it. We'll see if it pays off. It's kind of a gamble. Hey! Wonderful. This is winning for me. Uh, now what do we do? We keep... We kick green out of the middle, and we keep him out. Like I said, I've got three, he's got two. There's no way he can hold me out here. There's no point advantage uh, to speak of. I get 40 points for a mate. He's at 100. Um, what's going to be easiest? 1, 1, 2, 2, 3. Yeah. 
This is cut and dry. Nothing he can do about it. I bet Blue's pretty angry that Green took there. It was not, uh, not the right play for Green. Well, another way of seeing it is that it guaranteed second place for Green. So maybe it was calculated. What do I know? Maybe is maybe Green is more experienced than I am. So good game. Well fought by three out of the four opponents. Um, so yeah, that puts us at. Uh, 23.49, and uh, a good positional, strategical exhibition game. Uh, not saying I played perfectly, but uh, I hope you all enjoyed, and um, until next time, thanks for watching, everybody.